this computer. All right, share my screen. Okay, does everybody see my screen? Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see it. That's good. I just wanted to confirm. Here we go. Faisal, Umar hai line pe? उमर को मैंने कॉल करने की कोशिश की थी वो नहीं आ सका मैंने उसके ऊपर व्हाट्सएप पे भी भेजा ईमेल भी भेजी और फोन भी किया व्हाट्सएप पे लेकिन उसने उठाया नहीं वो कह रहा था कि आएगा बट ही नहीं ठीक है मैंने उसको तीन तरीके से भेज दिया अगर वो आ जाएगा तो बिस्मिल्लाह लेकिन शायद उसको ये पता ना हो कि हमारी डे लाइट सेविंग हुई है वो कहीं एक घंटे पहले इंतजार ना करो ओके आई एम गोइंग टू मैनेज पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड पुट एवरीबॉडी ऑन म्यूट एंड इफ ड्यूरिंग द टॉक यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस यू कैन गो हेड अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ्स एंड आस्क द क्वेश्चन बिस्मिल्लाहिर रहमानिर रहीम इन अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह नहमदुहू व नस्तईनुहू व नस्तगफिरुहू व नुमिनु बिहि व नतवक्कल व अलैक ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we begin in the name of allah we begin by praising him we thank him we seek his forgiveness <clears throat> and we seek refuge in allah from our evil deeds and the evil consequences of our evil deeds and the evil that resides within our souls whomsoever allah guides none none can misguide him and whomsoever allah allows to be astray because of his bad deeds then no one can guide him to the correct path i bear witness that there is no deity nothing worthy of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i bear witness that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and final messenger and to proceed know that the best of guidance the best speech is the speech of allah the quran and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of the affairs are those that are newly innovated in the religion and every newly innovated affair in the religion is a misguidance and every misguidance leads to the fire of hell today i'm going to address a specific topic called istikhara there seems to be a lot of misconception among people regarding this concept specifically related to istikhara and what is the difference between istikhara and salatul istikhara i'm going to talk about that today last week when i spoke about you know the seeking knowledge and the benefits of seeking knowledge i had intended that my next topic was going to be about the sources of knowledge and how knowledge is acquired etc but a i did not have uh, the chance to do justice to that topic that topic the more i opened it and uh, you know how i was going to prepare it, the more i realized you know what I might be biting off more than I can chew in one lecture. So, I'm probably going to break at breaking that topic into multiple lectures. But today I'm going to talk about a very specific thing. This came to me as a result of a friend asking me a question. And he was facing a decision and he was very malcontent. He was having a lot of difficulty with making that decision. And he wanted to know, you know, he wanted he asked me specifically as his friend what i think he should do as like at and i told him at the end of the day i cannot tell you all the specifics but i gave him the knowledge of what is istikhara and how he can rely upon allah to make his affair easier so today i'm going to talk about this 
and try to address some of the misconceptions that people have related to istikhara and salat al-istikhara and the difference between what is istikhara versus specifically salat al-istikhara. So let's get into it. If my computer cooperates and it is not cooperating. Hang on one second. Whoops. Okay. <clears throat> on the agenda today. We're going to talk about what is specifically the meaning of istikhara. And the reason I chose the topic, obviously, is because, the, because my friend asked me about istikhara. And specific, not, he didn't ask me about istikhara, but he, he was facing a choice, and I just wanted to give him some guidelines. And so today I'm going to tell you what is the meaning of istikhara <clears throat> and when one should go about doing istikhara. Then I'm going to talk about what is the method of salat al istikhara and a lot of you might be thinking that they might be the same thing and the answer is no they're not the same thing salat al istikhara is a form of istikhara is one type of istikhara but it is not the only type of istikhara and it will the meaning and the difference between the two become clear in just a second and finally i'm going to give you some pointers on the paradox of choice that we face on a day-to-day -day basis and as we get older, the paradox of choice becomes more and more obvious to us. And sometimes life becomes difficult because of the choices we have to make. And how istikhara can benefit us in that regard. <clears throat> First, let's get through the meaning of istikhara. Istikhara means specifically to seek goodness. And whenever we seek goodness, we should be making istikhara, meaning that Whenever we're trying to make a decision, we're trying to make a choice, we should make istikhara for all of our decisions. This means that it doesn't matter if the decision is large or small. We should seek goodness regarding all of our affairs, all of our choices. So there is a specific form of istikhara called salat al istikhara that we will discuss later on in this topic. But in Islamic terms, when we seek goodness from any of our decisions from Allah, any of our choices, when it comes to any of our decisions, in Islamic terms, that means istikhara, to seek goodness, to seek guidance, to seek goodness, to seek benefit from the choices and the decisions that we make. This means that whether it be a small decision or a major decision, we should make istikhara regarding all of them. The prayer called Salat al-Istikhara is a specific form of prayer that we will discuss. But Salat al-Istikhara, you can think of, reserve it for, number one, you can have time or if you have a major, major decision to make. But Istikhara specifically should be made for all of our decisions. So when should we do Istikhara? When should we seek goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Obviously, just by the definition, istikhara is not limited to major decisions in life. We should be seeking goodness. We should be seeking benefit from Allah regarding all of our decisions, all of our choices that we have to make. Meaning, when we have to make choices in this lifetime, when we have to make decisions in our lifetime, our knowledge is limited. Meaning that whether we have to do this X, Y, Z, we have different choices. Because our knowledge is limited, we should make decisions based on what we know. But we should seek goodness regarding those decisions, whether it be big ones or small ones, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what are some major decisions that we make throughout our lives? And this is a good thing, alhamdulillah, I've seen that people may, do make salat al istikhara when they're making major decisions in their life, and they absolutely should. Absolutely, they should do Salat al-Istikhara when making major decisions in their life. For example, buying a house, starting a new job, getting married, etc. All these major decisions that people make in their lives, they make Istikhara for. They specifically, one form of Istikhara that they make is Salat al-Istikhara. We'll talk about the method of that in just a second. But, we should also make it our habit. We should also make it our habit to do istikhara related to seemingly, seemingly insignificant decisions. What do I mean by that? 
seemingly insignificant decisions or choices may seem insignificant to us, but it's an opportunity to instill in our own psyche multiple things. And I'll talk about the benefits of istikhara in just a second. For example, when we go buy a shampoo, which one should I buy? Should I buy Head and Shoulders? Should I buy Dove? Should I buy this? Should I buy that? What, what shampoo should I buy? What should I be cooking today? What clothes I should wear? Small, should I pair this, wear this pair of shoes or that pair of shoes? Should I take this car or that car? What, 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 am, I, what am I doing? Should I buy, put, fill, in, fill up the gas tank now or should I wait until later? These seem like insignificant decisions. They are seemingly insignificant decisions, but understand that our whole lives, that our life is a collection of decisions and choices that we make. Small decisions all the way up to large decisions. We make thousands upon thousands of small decisions every week. And we make seemingly significant or major decisions less frequently. We don't buy houses that often. We don't start jobs that often. We don't get married that often. But our lives are a collection. They, our lives, are made up of the choices that we make. And therefore, if we ignore Istikhara, if we do not seek goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we make minor decisions, or we only seek goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are making major decisions, we are losing out on some major goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened for us through istikhara. And what is the method of making istikhara? Just like that, I talked about just a second ago, it simply means to seek goodness, meaning you're I recently went to a store. Uh, my wife was, uh, my wife had a sore throat and she wanted uh, some soup. So I went to buy soup. Now, obviously, if you've ever been to any grocery store in America or in the West, the soup aisle is probably one of the biggest aisles. Which one should I buy? Should I buy vegan, vegetarian? Okay, vegetarian. Should I buy organic, not organic? Okay, let's go with organic. Okay, with an organic, there are 17 different varieties. There is tomato. There is a lentil, there is mixed vegetable, there is pasta soups, there's this, 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 this. Okay, let's go with tomato. Okay, here you go, tomato. Now you have cream of tomato, you have regular tomato, you have tomato puree, you have tomato this, tomato that. It was endless. Eventually, finally, one thing that I did was I'm just going to buy what I think is the best one, what I think my wife will enjoy. And even if I don't, find it to be, it's not the perfect choice. I'll leave that up to Allah. But I stood there and I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness. And I said, oh Allah, let me make the right decision when it comes to the soup I'm selecting. If it's good for me, I'll then make it close to me. If it's not good for me, then remove it from me and let me be happy with my decision. And based on that, I bought the soup that I thought was best and I brought it home. Similarly, if we only make istikhara, if we only do reliance upon Allah, if we only do seek goodness from Allah when it comes to major decisions, then a large portion of our life will be free, will be away from the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can provide from istikhara. So don't think that istikhara is limited to major decisions in life. It is also related to small or seemingly insignificant decisions. When buying a shampoo, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, good, for goodness. Just make dua, Ya Allah, if this is the right shampoo, let me buy it and let me be happy with my decision. Same thing with what to cook. Same thing with what to wear. Don't think that the small, seemingly insignificant decisions are not an opportunity for you to instill in your head that there is a God and yet he will question you and that you can seek benefit from him at any given time. But when it comes to major decisions of our lives, big major decisions, whether it be uh, buying a car, buying a house, starting a job, getting married, things like that, going to college, which college to select, etc. We can do a specific form of istikhara, specific form of seeking goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is called salatul istikhara. And I'm going to talk about the method of salatul istikhara right now. Salatul istikhara is two units or two rak'at of nafil prayer, of extra prayer, that can be prayed at any time 
when your need arises. Meaning, let's assume for argument's sake that your need arises right now. You can pray it right now. If your need arises tomorrow or during the night or whenever, it can be prayed. There is no specific time for it. You can pray Salat al Istikhara any time your need arises, whenever you need to seek guidance from Allah. And the purpose of it is to seek guidance and benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding your decisions. And once you seek guidance, and I will talk about the specific prayer of it in just a second. Once guidance is sought, what you should do, you should go ahead and make what you think in your best this knowledge is the best decision. And go with that decision and be content with that decision. There seems to be a lot of misinformation regarding that you should be waiting for some kind of dream or some kind of certain feeling or et cetera, et cetera, which is just another form of procrastination. Don't do that. Seek guidance and seek goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then based on that, make what you think is the best decision and move forward. This is the hadith of Salat al istikhara and this is narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anha. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach us the way of doing istikhara to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide one in the right sort of action concerning anything or any deed in all matters as if he was teaching us a surah of the Quran. Meaning, he used to teach this dua to his companions as if he was teaching the Quran. Now, this dua is not a part of the Quran, but he used to teach it to us just like as if it was. And the Prophet ﷺ said that if any one of you thinks of doing any job, thinks of doing anything or making a major decision, I'm adding those words because that's, it's implied here, he should offer two raka'at prayer other than the compulsory ones, meaning that this is not included in the 17 raka'at that we pray during the day and night. These are two extra prayer, nafil prayer. And then after offering those two raka'at, after offering those two extra prayers, this is the prayer he should make. I would recommend that whoever is watching this should take a screenshot of this Arabic. I'm going to obviously put this on YouTube. And if you want, I, I'm going to give you the, uh, the reference for Sahih Bukhari as well. You can look up in Sahih Bukhari this specific hadith, or you can just go online and find this. But this is, this is very important. So let's, let's, <clears throat> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. After you're done praying, this is the prayer that you should make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inni inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika wa astaqdiruka biqudratika wa as'aluka min fadlika al-'azim fa innaka taqdiru wa la aqdiru wa ta'lamu wa la a'lam wa anta 'allam al-ghuyub Allahumma in kunta ta'lamu ta'lamu anna hadha al-amra خير لي في ديني ومعاشي وعاقبة أمري فاقدره لي ويسر ويسره لي ثم بارك ثم بارك لي فيه وإن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر شر في ديني ومعاشي وعاقبة أمري أمري فاصرفه عني واصرفني عنه وقدر 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 لي وقدر لي لي الخير حيث حيث كان ثم مرضني به. And the translation is as follows. Oh Allah, I ask guidance from you, from your knowledge and power and your might, and I ask for your great blessing. You are capable and I am not. You know and I do not and you know the unseen. Oh Allah, if you know that this job or this thing or this decision is good for my religion and my subsistence and in my hereafter, 
then ordain it for me and make it easy for me to get and then bless me in it. And if you know that this job is harmful to me in my religion and subsistence and the hereafter, then keep it away from me and let me be away from it. And ordain for me whatever is good for me and make me satisfied with it. The Prophet then added that then the person should name or mention his need. Meaning that once you are done making this prayer, you should specifically mention what it is that you are making this prayer regarding. So the gist of this is you're saying, oh Allah, I ask for guidance because you have the knowledge and I don't. You have the power and I don't. And if you know that whatever I'm about to do is good for me, for my religion, for my subsistence, and for my hereafter, then ordain it for me and let it me be close to it. But if it is harmful for me or my religion or my subsistence or my hereafter, then keep it away from me. And let me be content with it. Let me be satisfied with it. This is a very key sentence right here. And make me satisfied with it. Meaning that if the decision is good for me, let it come to me and let me be satisfied with it. Or if the decision is bad for me, then remove it from me and remove me from it and let me be satisfied with that. This is a very key sentence right here. Because this is where the paradox of choice comes in. What is the paradox of choice? Typically, the choices that we make usually means more stress for ourselves. What do I mean by that? The more choices that we have means more stress, which is why sometimes you will notice adults pining or remembering the day or pining over or remembering or the days of their childhood saying, man, those were simpler days. Do they want to become children again? No. But why do they say something like that? The reason they say that is they realize that growing up means having to make decisions and sometimes very difficult decisions. And when you are a child and you don't have many choices to make, you are told what to do by your parents. Life is carefree, relatively carefree. As you grow up, as you have the responsibility of making more and more choices and dealing with the consequences of those choices, whether they be good consequences or bad consequences, meaning that it'll add stress, it has to. Fewer choices means fewer decisions, means less stress. And this is one of the major problems that we face in modern society. The problem that we face in modern society is that we have way too many choices. And we end up finding dissatisfaction in the choices we make somehow thinking that we made the wrong decision or we made the wrong choice. You go to the store, you want to buy a shirt. Go ahead. What size? Large, medium. Well, I think I'm a large. I'm about medium. Medium should be fine. Maybe it's large. Okay, okay. Let's select a size. Okay. What's material? Okay. Um, I'm going to say cotton or polyester or cotton polyester mix. Okay. You selected that. Okay. What color? Every color in the rainbow is available. Okay. Now you selected a color. Excellent. Which manufacturer? And the problem continues and continues and continues. You may end up making one choice, a small choice, seemingly insignificant choice of a shirt. But these, the number of choices you continue to have to make, the number of decisions you continue to have to make, if there some, seems to be some kind of dissatisfaction with the choice you made, let's assume for argument's sake that the color of the shirt or something or some other decision you make, it just wasn't perfect you're going to end up thinking to yourself, man, I should have selected something else. You will continue to be dissatisfied with your choice. Continue to think that you somehow made the wrong one. The more choices you have, it seems like, hey, you know what? It should make us happier. But 
the more choices you have, the, like, the more likely you are to suffer the paradox of choice. You may end up regretting that choice. So if we choose something, whether it be our shirt, whether it be what we cook, whether it be uh, what job we choose, etc., if it doesn't turn out in our favor, if it somehow turns bad, if it somehow causes us some harm, we end up blaming ourselves. What do we say? Man, I should have selected something else. Some other choice must have been the right one. I should have gone to that place. I should have selected that job. I should have married that person. I should have cooked this. I should have cooked that. I should have done this. I should have done that. When these choices, and if we choose and something doesn't turn in our favor, we end up blaming ourselves. Man, some other choice must have been the right one. And this can cause you significant amounts of stress. And too many choices can also cause a type of decision paralysis. Meaning that when it comes to choosing, you can feel paralyzed and not be able to make a decision. Have you ever gone to a store trying to buy something and bought nothing at all? Happened to me. I'm sure it happened to my listeners. Why not? You go to a store trying to buy a pair of pants. Well, should I buy jeans or should I buy khakis? Okay, what color khakis? Okay, what size? Okay, what manufacturer? Okay, what material? Keep going and going and going until you finally say, okay, this is, the, this is what I think I want. And you're like, maybe it's this one, maybe it's that one. And before you realize two hours have gone by, you haven't bought anything. You haven't done anything. You haven't chosen anything. This paradox of choice can cause paralysis. And this is the cure for this paradox of choice. It's the khara is the cure for this paradox of choice. When we are faced with that many choices on a day-to-day -day basis, and when we have to make quick judgments, snap judgments, decisions regarding our lives on a continuous basis, given limited information, we don't know everything. We're not certain if this small decision or this major decision that we're about to make is going to turn out good for us or bad for us. We just don't know. What's going to end up happening? Some of the decisions that we make may not turn out in our favor. But the cure for the paradox of choice is istikhara. If we make istikhara a habit, if we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance regarding our judgments and our decisions, and we make our judgments, we make our decisions based on our available information, even if it does not turn out perfect, even if it wasn't perfect, even if it wasn't somehow completely in our favor, we can rest assured that even those decisions that turned out unfavorably are good for us. Why? Because we asked goodness from Allah, sometimes something that is bad for us ends up being what is good for us. It turns out that you got sick, but understand that illness is what is a, a way of your body developing immunity or fighting off or fending off diseases. While you're sick, it, it's terrible. It doesn't feel good. But understand that that's your body building resistance, building a fighting habit of fend, fending off diseases. The disease itself is not good for you. It hurts. But in the long run, it is good for you. Similarly, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness and we make it a habit regarding all of our decisions, whether it be small decisions or major decisions, number one, we avoid the stress of related to the paradox of choice. We will not be paralyzed in what choices to make. We will not be stressed out by it. And the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis will give us satisfaction. Alhamdulillah. Even if it turned out bad, it's okay. That's okay. It's good for us. I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not turn me down in my goodness. Just because it turned out that this choice was unfavorable, in the long run, I can rest assured that that is good for me. Alhamdulillah. 
istikhara is your cure for the paradox of choice. And this paradox of choice, especially the children, when you're growing up, you're going to face. You're probably starting to face it already. If you're in school, which subject should I choose? Should I take this class or that class? I don't know. Which major should I choose? What should I do? Ah! If you don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn our decisions in our favor and ask for his guidance, and finally, finally, the most important thing, the final sentence that I spoke about was, ask for satisfaction related to our choices. That, oh Allah, if it is good for me, make it close to me. If it is bad for me, remove me from it. But finally, whether it is whether I chose to do it or whether I chose not to do it, ask for satisfaction. Ask for contentment. Because this lack of content can cause a lot of, of, a lot of problems, a lot of stress. Whether you chose this job or that job, it doesn't matter. You can always continue to blame yourself, continue to think, maybe I should have chosen something else. Maybe I should have gone somewhere else. Maybe I should have done something else. It will drive you crazy. So this is the way of avoiding the paradox of choice. And we should always, always, always continue to make decisions by asking first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through istikhara what, and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance regarding our decisions and our judgments. In conclusion, what did we discuss today? We discussed what is istikhara and specifically what is the method of Salatul Istikhara and how Salatul Istikhara is one form of Istikhara, but that is not the only form of Istikhara. We can, Istikhara simply means to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for guidance, asking for goodness. So that means we can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for guidance or asking for goodness in our decisions, in whatever decisions we want to make, whether it be small decisions or major decisions. That means we should make istikhara always when it comes to our decisions. And finally, I spoke about what is the method of salat al-istikhara. So that is it for today. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa shahadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. I'm going to unmute everybody. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, anything like that, now is the time. By the way, I think everybody's still on mute. If you want to ask a question or make a comment, you should unmute yourself. Right now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, by the way, I, uh, today was uh, daylight savings time. So I uh, even, uh, let's just be sure in the future, even if it switches, we're going to follow 11 a.m. Sunday. Whether it's in daylight saving or not daylight saving, we're not going to move our hour back or forth. We're going to start at 11 a.m. on Sunday every time, inshallah. Okay, if, are there any questions, comments? If not... Okay, Jazakallah khair everyone for coming. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa utubu ilayk wa ma alayna illa al-balaag al-mubin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.